can you make a historical costume on a budget? I tried to find out, and this is how it went. I had a random idea in my head of like what that meant, which, you know, it's not just time. Okay, what I meant to say was money. We've also talked about this, that it also it's the spoons that you have at the moment. It's how much access and how much time you have to things. I thought I'd go through all the layers and kind of talk about how I saved money, how I saved time, how I tried to do less and if it worked or not. Spoiler alert, I learned that I actually don't like using the sewing machine. Sorry. I definitely tried to not research and that didn't work out so good, which you can see in my last video. There were a lot of people who watched that video. Thank you so much. You are now a part of the Salty Possum Club in case you didn't know that. It's what, I don't know, what's the thing? So let's go through all of the things that I made for this, which are significantly more than I thought. Roll the tape. Just do it. Just cut to it now. So I started off by making combinations from a Victorian nightgown I bought on Amazon and it was $45 so I didn't save any money from like a material standpoint but I did save time, energy, and I outsourced a bit of the details that were already in the nightgown by like using them and incorporating them into the finished product. And I also, I wasn't stressed out about research too because <laughs> if it isn't exact, it's going to be under everything else. You can see how I put it together here. Next up was the corset, and I definitely lost spoons and money on this one actually because <laughs> I thought the kit came with the pattern, so the kit was $70 and the pattern was another $25, and then I also got the wrong kit for the right pattern, so I couldn't use the boning that came with the kit. So I settled on plastic zip ties for the boning, which was another like $15, not a big deal. And I also worked on this after my dog passed away, so there were some heavy feels at the time anyway. Uh, I was kind of in a chaotic place. Place, but like I really needed to get this done and it just was looking for something to finish to like feel a little better about what was going on so yeah I also made a huge mess next was the petticoat that I got on Amazon for $38 um, there was no save on money with this I did save spoons and energy and time because I didn't have to do anything to make it however it's not really full enough to satisfy me for like the right shape from the time, so it means I had to make another petticoat and buy more fabric to make that. At this point, I realized that to get the hourglass look, I needed padding in my bust and my hips. I was able to use my scraps from an old mock-up for the bum pad and the bust pad, and I hacked up an old pillow for stuffing. I saved money for sure, but I didn't really enjoy it because I was still in a weird place of like, forcing myself to make it as fast as possible and wanting it to be done really quick. And so it was stressful, but I did get it done in like a couple of hours, so I saved on time. Once I realized the bright pink binding on my corset would show through my shirt waist, I had to make a corset cover. And by this point, I was sick of spending money, so it was time to recycle a pillowcase. I didn't care about the accuracy that much. I just, I still spent some time looking up to get the general idea of the shape, but then I just made this as easy as possible. It took an hour, I saved energy, I spent no money, and this time I made sure that I did not get stressed out. Then it was time to actually make my second petticoat, the one I needed because the other one wasn't good enough. I bought a ruffled bed skirt off of Amazon, which would have been great if the central part of the bed skirt had actually been fabric. And it wasn't, so I had to use like this old curtain that I don't use anymore and then piece that together with the ruffles that actually were fabric. I did save myself a ton of time by not making those ruffles though, and a lot of energy. Probably the best find of this entire ensemble was a used reproduction shirtwaist I found on Etsy. It was only $35, and considering all the work that went into it, I'm kind of blown away that I found it. No labor, a little research just to make sure that I got the right look. I saved money and time for sure. Absolutely total win. The skirt was actually a lot of fun to make. This took much more time though, and a lot more of everything because I bought the fabric. I had to make the entire thing from scratch. I sold the whole thing myself. Uh, the only thing I saved was time on like say, making it by machine instead of doing it by hand, but that's still a technique they used back then. I inserted pockets, I made it from an actual original Edwardian pattern, so 
I actually gained spoons because this was actually fun for me. <laughs> the belt was actually really straightforward. It was completely salvaged from my cabbage. I got to sew it by hand, which actually is when I realized that I hate the sewing machine. It was so great to just sit and use my hands and sew. Actually, it was kind of restorative. The item that actually took the longest was the bolero, and part of that is because I tried doing a mock-up first, and I just, just by draping it, and it was horrible. And then I, I found a free pattern online that sort of showed the pattern, and I had no idea how to size it up, so I just sort of guessed and used some numbers and some maths, and, and when I cut it out of the lining material, it actually worked okay, so I was just honestly really lucky. Um, then I hand made the ruching on there from the remaining fabric because I was definitely not buying more trim at this point. Overall, I felt much better doing the hand sewing aspects of it, but it took me a week, so there was no budget on time here. After that, there's really the only thing left to do was to make the accessories or find the accessories. So first I started off with my hat, which actually wasn't that hard to alter. You can just cut the brim off from the crown and then shorten it and then stitch it back together. Everything else was kind of just stuff I already had that I stuck on there. I found this amazing parasol on Amazon and these shoes that are also from Amazon and this wig that's also from Amazon. And all of those required zero energy, so yay. Conclusions. I just wanted to take a minute to explain that while I was making this video, I literally ran out of spoons. So um, clearly my very real lesson is learning how to actually manage my autistic burnout and not just push through it all the time. One of the things that was actually kind of surprising about this project is the fact that I changed my view of what success looks like. I think a lot of times we tend to think that success is perceived in amount of accuracy, how the, le the skill level, how good it looks on the model, how good the pictures turned out, impact of the fabrics used, and how closely it was like made to the techniques of the time. And I used to feel that way too. Now I'm sort of starting to think that the best part of this whole experiment is that I kind of learned to just sort of let all that go. Because A, however you choose to make a costume is valid, and B, the reasons why you make the choices that you do are way more complex than those few things that I listed before. And C, this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> I'm kind of interested in making sure that my standards for myself and for other people are not gatekeepy. Because I think that our standards now for what we consider to be a budget are actually very similar to what people did back then. People did mend things. People only spent what they had. People used less fancy fabrics if they couldn't afford fancy fabrics. People recycled. People reused. People made went for things that were more quickly made. So we kind of sometimes have this idea in our head that's like super perfectionistic and it's not even that real realistic when it comes to like how things actually were back then. So to answer the question, can you budget for historical costuming? Yes. I think that that is going to look very different for everyone. So I definitely think that there is an aspect now um, that I am seeing that I didn't before, which is that we all kind of need to help each other out uh, and that we are all more successful together. So I guess my version of budgeting now is more focused on how to gain connection, how to conserve my spoons, and not allow the brain gremlins to win and eat that all up, and how to buy things on Amazon and not feel like a terrible person, and embrace the humanity of clothing. Because a lot of these historical costumes, they are clothing. And mostly just be okay with wherever I am without forcing myself into this concept of success. And I feel like a broken record at this point, but like, <laughs> it's something I constantly have to learn and relearn and retell myself. We are more than just one 2D image or idea that we have for what we should be. Thanks for joining me. Take care, salty possums. I'll see you next week.